This is the Unimog everyone be waiting from WPL But no, it's not from WPL, it's from a new brand called LDRC In this video, I'm going to share everything you need to know about this model From what I know, RBRC is one of the four partners in the creation of LDRC And despite RBRC have created so many problems for us in the past I will still be neutral in this review If it's good, it's good If it's bad, I'll tell you it's bad Also, I have purchased this with my own money We have stocked a small number of units on the Asia RCD port, our second store For this model, it will be shipped with an external shipping box Like you purchase on WPL official store As so after sales, we may or may not be able to help as this is a new brand to so purchase at your own risk. Check out link in the description once you have done watching this video. This video has a lot of in-depth details about the Unimog, so sit back and watch. That's the box art. Let more people like playing models. And the direct translation of the gearbox. That is not a gearbox. Follow me. Wave box. Trailer available separately. This looks familiar, right? Because they copied it from WPL. I translated this for WPL. It's a one shaft scale with a 206mm. Base. In the box, you get the radio, the car, accessory bag, and the USB charger, a 2S 1200mAh battery, whereas the radio uses two AAA batteries. It's a three channel proportional steering and proportional throttle. Knob here is for steering alignment. A button is throttle dual rate. B button is for third channel, which you will find out later. C is for changing the light mode. You can find a manual at the back, which is really convenient. The radio design looks really funny with a sharp edge here. Feels Actually, it feels girly for me. Of course, cheap car with a cheap remote. I'm gonna put these accessories on and then we're gonna assess the car. Look much better with all the accessories installed. It only tells you how to install pieces from here, which they give extra, which is nice. It didn't mention where to install these light bits. Didn't mention this. It mentioned this. It also came with two boxes that you have to install it over here. There are extra leaf spring and a heat sink for the motor. Alright, the features at the front is where you put your battery. Bonnet or the hood is damn freaking hard to open because of how it's designed. So put a battery here. It's a nice touch to see wipers. Door is openable and it shuts very well too. The door gap is, is good. Detail on the interior is quite good, just like WPL. You can even see throttle and brake pedal inside. This one has leg room, so you do not need to cut the leg of your figurine. Not like WPL. Yeah, snooker, side mirror, and there's rear windows too. They didn't take a shortcut on the roof with a piece here. It looks like the gate on this is actually foldable. Let's try. Oh yes. Mm, both sides too. Ooh, that looks different. And you can actually take them off completely. Just pulling this up and snap back on easily. Now comes to the undercarriage. I'm quite impressed actually. Because on the steering rack, the XO case and the dry shaft, this looks like composite material found on a premium brand like Yokomo. If you compare the surface of this to the receiver case, this looks shiny. These are like these are like the normal plastic. So I wonder if this is just a surface treatment or if these are really high quality composite material. As you can see here, the front has headlight mounted already. Steering is actually very, very smooth, very quiet. I wonder if it's a metal or a plastic gear inside. Very, very smooth. This is what everyone wants. A portal axle. Why? Why are you all so crazy about portal axle? Portal axle, portal axle, portal axle, portal axle. The axle has metal UJ. This looks quite beefy. And I think it's a metal axle gear inside as well. There's leaf spring like the WPLB series, but oddly in this case they are not smooth. Front leaf spring seriously is not working. I like the rear okay maybe they didn't get the idea of this when copying the wpl one it's totally rigid yeah you can roll but then there's no upward downward movement single 260 size motor inside there's a hole in there for you to put a second motor plastic dry shaft that i think will last single speed gearbox with separate output shaft so this will reduce the torque twist there's stainless steel frame rail longer dry shaft at the back and this is where the receiver is the on off switch over here there are these details underneath the bed. It's not details over here as well, which you have to install the cap by yourself. Side step is not for quarters. Okay, there are many more technical details that I would like to share with you, but I don't want to continue to bore you with too many of it. So let's go for a test drive first, and I'll share the remaining after the test drive. There are discoveries that other YouTubers did not know. Okay, the road test led not expect too much out of it because this is RTR. You can always modify it, make it better. Like for example, adding wheel weights to the wheels, which you can use the one from WPL. Let's go. Control is pretty accurate actually. I can easily drive it and then it's not falling off as well. Whoa, that's amazing. It's not falling off. Oh, it's still holding. See that wheel is really almost like three wheel, right? 
but still not dropping. That is impressive to see. But shit, there. Okay, low end throttle modulation is very, very fine as well. I think even better than on the WPL RTR. So they have learned something from WPL. It's very fine. Let's try to climb. Whoa, the portal axle helps a lot with this. I didn't expect that it would be able to climb this though. Woo, easily up the straight wall. Bumper is preventing it. If you want to modulate the throttle at low speed, very fine. You can actually do that. So definitely lacking a bit of uh, low end torque, but it's all right. This is RTR, and what impresses me is you can actually still uh, there's I think this has quite a good amount of grip, so it's able to hold onto the latch. Oops, I just ran over the end. Well, the low speed modulation is really good. Low speed mode, high speed mode. Kill the big mountain. It's just a little bit underpowered. It's gonna make you to upgrade, right? Now let's get back to the studio. Tires, I think these are RTR kind of hardness, but it's quite grippy actually. Pretty realistic and clean feel there. It's a lock axle on both front and rear axle. I wonder what became loose. So got to find out. I took it out days later. Surprised to see that there's no screw on the gear. However, there are screw thread on the ring gear. Input gear has also worn out already quite badly and it looks very very similar to the BPL's design. But the great thing is it's really smooth. They also use a larger shaft diameter on the input gear. This is 4mm diameter, the BPL one is 3mm. Solid axle in front. Wow, the gear has really worn out. So many metal powder here. So it looks like the gear is actually press fit despite the ring gear having screw thread on it. Once you turn on the car, the light here will be on and just press the C button. So switch it to blinking mode and then press again to turn it off press again to turn it on again whenever you turn it on the throttle is on slow mode just press a switch it to high mode I think there's some signal issue here you can't have the remote too close to it there's also rear light indicator here which looks really nice try putting led lights here although it may be hard to hide the wires there is how the chassis look. Receiver at the back, quite a big one, and this could be the control for the third channel. Thing is, this antenna position here that is causing the glitching when the radio is near. I'm gonna put it up away from power line. So my front suspension is still not working at all, it's just stiff. Maybe they didn't understand how it works when they were copying WPL. It's interesting that there are three wires on the switch, so I think it's better that you unplug your battery when the car is not in use. The Chinese wording here that says yellow, white, red on both of these connectors. So is it for a rear indicator? Yellow, white, red. Also the Chinese word here, left light, right light. So this probably just like the Raspberry tree that has light control for side indicators and also the rear light. There's also SPK wording here. Maybe this is for speaker. So this was just a C34. The remote is pretty big and uh, quite tall as well makes the c 34 looks really cute and tiny the unimog is long man wheel base are the same width are the same but unimog is longer versus the c54 which is even smaller wheel base is also slightly shorter than that this is from the c14 and c24 generation this is from the c34 and c44 generation tires are quite the same height actually this is the c14 b14 wheels which is smaller diameter. This is C54 wheels, which is slight, which is slightly smaller than it. And surprisingly, C34 wheel is taller. Maybe it has deformed. Too long storage. Comparing a new one, also taller. The C34 one is taller. 
So the conclusion, I'm not gonna tell you whether you should buy one or not. If you are a fan of Unimog, this is a pretty decent one from LDRC as WPR will be releasing one so soon. And the alternative out there is at least double the price of this. I'm not a fan of Unimog but this is growing on me day by day. It's pretty large at one shot scale, even bigger than our C34. Quality is really decent too. Great low end throttle modulation, quite a number of details. Only issue I have is the radio can be glitchy when you change the throttle dual rate. It's fine after turning it on and off. Front lift spring suspension isn't functioning. It's a bit underpowered but it's RTR, understandable. Now the fun part that will get you stick to it is upgrading its performance, just like a WPL, a blank sheet to unleash your creativity. I'll try if a WPL 2 tweak gearbox would fit as it's an awesome gearbox and adding wheels weight to it as well. You can click the thumbnail on the screen to get one from our store or check out the next video. Cheers! Click the left thumbnail for the latest video or smash the subscribe button on the middle of the screen. So I'll see you on the next video, bye!